Hey Bussy Elementary and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about recycling and at the end we're going to make maracas. So here's what you'll need. A toilet paper roll, a paper towel roll if you want to make a rain stick. If you don't have either one of these items you can find a water bottle around your house. I'm still drinking the water in this one but if you find an empty one, you can take the plastic off because it already has a lid. You'll also need tape so you can close the top and the bottom of your instrument. If you don't have tape, you can use a stapler. Just make sure you're super careful. You'll also need a few rocks. That's what we're going to put inside of our instrument. Why is recycling important? Here's a few reasons why. Number one, we're running out of space in our landfills to put the garbage. You know, whenever the garbage trucks come to your house, they collect all of the garbage on their route, and then whenever they're done, they take it to the landfill, and they dump all of the garbage trucks, dump their garbage into one area. Well, it's full. There's nowhere else for the garbage to go. So there's actually a country that I want you to look on YouTube. I want you to search Landfill Harmonic, amazing and inspirational. It's 11 minutes and 45 seconds long. It's not long at all. And I want you to see what they're doing with the all of the garbage that has collected on the streets and um, in their landfills and things like that because they have also run out of space as well. It's not just a problem that we have here in America. So look this video up at the end. Also, if you have a brother or a sister that's with you right now, bring them to the video so they can join us and make instruments with us as well. So, number one, our landfills are full. Number two, we have space trash. Did y'all know that? There is trash in space. We've run out of, like I said, like on topic number one, we've run out of space here on Earth. So we're sending it to space. And think about that. Y'all know I like to think about aliens and stuff like that. So I imagine it like if you're driving by somebody's front yard and you see in their front yard that they, you know, they don't really keep things very clean. So you wonder what does the inside of their house look like if this is what the outside looks like. So it's kind of like that whenever the aliens are like zooming by and they want to see what's happening at earth, they pause and they're like, this what their house looks like on the outside. What does it look like on the inside? So they just keep going and they're not going to give us any attention. Also, whenever we send rockets into space and things like that to go and do research and see what they can find. They have to dart and dodge all of this trash that's in in the space, in the space, that's in space. And it's a very dangerous job. They have to do the same exact thing whenever they're coming back down. And if they're running into these huge items, they could potentially, you know, hurt themselves, which is not what we want at all. The third main thing is back down on earth, the oceans. <sighs> Y'all know I scoop dive and I did not realize how, how much of our garbage is in the ocean. The deepest part of the ocean is the Mariana Trench. Did y'all know that there's trash at the deepest part of the ocean? There are not many people in the world. You can probably count on one, maybe two hands, the people who have been to the bottom of the ocean. And they said whenever they got down there, they expected to see things that they had not ever seen before. Creatures they had never seen before. And they saw trash bags and candy wrappers and things like that. So it was very upsetting to see it firsthand as I'm, you know, going by and I'm seeing turtles and angelfish and things like that. And then all of a sudden I see this garbage bag just whirling by with the current it it kind of makes you realize that we are invading other people's homes it's like again the the house analogy going to somebody's house you know and leaving your your food there just being like okay here thanks for dinner i'm gonna leave my trash on your table and leave it's not a polite thing to do so we need to be very conscious about 
what we're putting into the ocean because after I started scuba diving, I started doing a little bit of research and I stumbled upon videos where there were whales who had washed up on shore and, you know, because they had passed away and their stomachs were full of like trash bags and fishing lure and things like that where they thought they were eating maybe a jellyfish because a trash bag can look like a jellyfish underwater. Look it up. It's it's deceptive. It's very deceptive. And it's sad because they thought that they were eating something that was going to fill them with nutrition and it ultimately killed them because we as humans are not being conscious of what we're doing with our trash. Same thing with turtles. Simply, our goal as humans is to limit our carbon footprint the space that we're taking up, the trash that we're leaving. It's, we're just, we're simply running out of places to put our trash. And we have to be a little more careful and mindful about what we're doing. So what can you do? I'm gonna show you a few of the ways that I limit my plastic use, the amount of garbage that I am producing like on a day-to-day basis. So, lunch time. I'm a teacher, y'all are my students. We eat lunch at school every single day. I start with taking my lunch kit. I don't put it in like a plastic bag or a paper bag or anything like that. I have a bag, it zips, I put things in it, carry it every day with me. Inside of my lunch kit, I have plastic bags. These have cactuses on them. I will put any kind of chips or grapes or anything that is, you know, able to fit into a bag, I will close it. And that's what I will put, you know, trail mix, things like that in. As for my actual food, this is called a bento box. This is from, not from Japan, but like the idea of them um, where you can minimize space. So they're stackable. And I like to put, in this order, I like to put cheese in the top. I like to put pepperonis in the middle. And I will put like crackers and things like that in the bottom. So that's what I will bring my lunch in so I am not having to throw away plastic all the time. I also have my own straws. If you look, you'll know I like mermaids and things that glitter, so they change color. And on the side, if you look carefully, where'd it go? No. It says mermaid. Oh, it's not focusing. There you go. It says mermaid on the side of them because they're mermaid straws. Anyway, I take these with me to restaurants or to school. I don't use plastic straws because those tend to end up in turtles' noses, if I'm being completely honest. And the thought of that, you know, knowing that like my personal straw could possibly be what causes a turtle pain is not something I want on my mind. Y'all know I'm, I'm not about that life. Also, the largest thing that I have changed in my life is something that I do every single week. When I go grocery shopping, I take my own grocery bags with me every single week. I wash them, retake them, I put my fruit, veggies, meats, everything, all in separate bags. We're gonna do a little bit of math. Y'all didn't know that we were gonna do math. Okay, so let's just say I use 25 bags every time I go to the grocery store and I shop once a week. That's 100 plastic bags in one month that just me, Miss Brock, is producing. Those garbage bags, or those food bags are going to go directly into the trash can whenever I get home because I'm probably not going to use something that had raw meat in it. Um, No, not about that life. Now multiply that, how many months are in a year? Do you know? 
12. You're right. That's 1,200 bags that just myself alone that I would be putting in into the trash circle of life, you could call it. Now, I've been using my own bags for four years now. That's a total of 4,800 plastic bags that I alone have not used. And that makes me feel you know, happy knowing that I'm doing my part. Now, it seems like a little bit just me, but if you multiply it by one family and then that family tells another family and it becomes like a domino effect where then ultimately everybody would be carrying their own reusable bags to the grocery store, then that alone would eliminate, thou, eliminate that would eliminate thousands and thousands of plastic bags every single year. Just think about what we could do if we stopped right now using plastic bags in the grocery store. It's exciting for me to think about knowing that I'm doing my small part. Okay, now that we've talked about why it's important to recycle, what can you do to recycle? Let's go ahead and move to our maracas. Now, like I said, you're going to need a toilet paper roll, a paper towel roll, or a water bottle. So I'll pause just a second, or you can pause me for just a second. Go get what you need, and then meet me back here. Don't forget crayons or markers. Don't forget you're gonna need a few little rocks or beans. You could use beans if you have like dried beans. Those would be perfect as well. Um, really anything that shakes, that's the goal, is that's, that's what we want. Okay. Now, go ahead, get your markers, get your crayons, everything out that you need. I'm gonna start with the color pink. I keep picking it up, putting it down, I'm like, do I want it, do I not want it? I want it. Okay, so. Go ahead and start decorating your maraca however you want. Um, you can write your name, you can, I've seen some really creative ones. Actually, I've seen like marshmallow, I've seen unicorns and rainbows, and uh, what's it called? The um, Minecraft, that's what it's called, Minecraft. I've seen Minecraft characters. I've seen some pretty awesome things. Now, next time I see you in music class, I want you to bring your maraca to me so we can share and see what they look like. So, I am gonna start with putting dots on mine because I love, basically it's gonna look like glitter is what I'm trying to make it look like. What are you putting on yours? I'm also putting stars because, you know, we always have star student in music class. That's one of my favorite things is star student because I like to see what y'all pick from the treasure chest box. It lets me know a little bit about y'all. Like if you pick like a car, that probably tells me that you like things that go fast. You like, or if you pick... We have sunglasses. That means you probably like to be outside. You like things that are going to um, make you look cool. Let's me know a little bit about you. Okay. So, here's what I've got so far. A music note, a heart, a star. I wrote my name. Not that anybody is going to take my instrument. It's just me and my dogs. But... Go ahead and finish yours up. If you want to pause the video, you can. I'll be here waiting for you. If you paused the video, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and continue with making our maracas. Or if you decided to make your rain stick. Or if you didn't have either one of these. Your water bottle maraca. Now, step number two. After you have made your instrument, I want you to take the top portion and we need to close this off. So fold it in half the top, pinch it, 
I'm gonna put three staples because my stapler is a tiny baby stapler. Now, flip your instrument upside down and fold it the opposite direction. So it should kind of make a triangle. Back in the day, whenever I was in elementary school, we used to have these little like fruit pops that would come in these. It would be like grape or cherry or something like that. I would always get super excited because it was kind of like our ice cream day, how like on Friday at our school we have, um, you know, usually a little treat or something like that. That was what happened whenever I was in school. So every time we make these instruments, I always think about whenever I was in school and we had the little fruit pops. Anyway, okay, so after your instrument looks like this, it's not closed yet though, don't close it. I want you to go, again, you can pause the video if you want. I might have to pause the video because I can't find my rocks. I just had them. You um, can pause the video. Go and either get beans or little rocks from outside or anything that you think will shake. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. So, I have my little rocks. Go ahead and put them inside of your instrument. At this point, we are gonna go ahead and close it. So make sure before you seal it, however you're deciding to close it, that it looks like the triangle that we have. Again, I'm gonna put three staples. And we have an instrument, guys. Remember, you can look around your house and find anything that is recyclable, 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 and make an instrument out of it. And don't forget to go ahead, click over to the search bar, type in Landfill Harmonic Amazing and Inspirational, and give that video a watch. It's in Spanish, but it has English subtitles at the bottom, so all of the students at our campus should have the ability to follow along and see what's happening. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. Bye.